Jamal Prince with Shalom. Let's get to it, though. You get first, or you're in first Corinthians, you get first Corinthians 7, right? You get first Corinthians 7, and you get first Timothy 2, right? So now, first we have to understand where we've been at in order to understand where we're going, right? So like you said, the Bible is just a regular book. The Bible is not just a regular book, because there's no other book that has withstood the test of time the way that the scriptures have. Why? Because there's no other book that makes predictions about things that are coming to happen and then all of those things surely come to happen, right? This, so the Bible cannot be matched with any other book, right? You can look at the Chinese I Ching, you can look at uh, uh, the Quran in Islam, right? You can look at the Bhagavad Gita, which is the scriptures of the Hindus, so on and so forth, and those books do not contain prophecies that have come to actually pass the way that the Bible has, right? The Bible deals with everything. But, um, and, and it also deals with the role of a man and of a woman, right? So I'm going to show you what the scripture says your role is, right? Go ahead. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13. For Adam was first born, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Right, the woman was deceived, right? Go ahead, read on. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Right, exactly. So you will be saved through childbearing, through bearing children to a righteous man. Right? Go ahead. You read what you got. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 7. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 7, and verse 8. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows. To the unmarried and widows, right? So I'm not gonna put you on blast out here, right? But sex is marriage according to the scriptures. So if the last man you slept with would be your husband according to the scriptures, right? We it is good for them if they abide even as I. Right, so Paul, he refrained or abstained. He had a, like a chastity belt. Back then he had their equivalent of a chastity belt, right? Meaning that he abstained from sex so that he could devote all of his energy to serving the Lord. So he said that he wishes that everybody would be like him, right? But what? Verse 9. But if they cannot contain. Right, but if you can't contain, you got that itch that needs to be scratched, right, Reed? Let them marry. Then you get a man and you let him scratch that itch, right, Reed? For it is better to marry. It's better to marry, right? It's better for you to have a man, Reed. Than to burn. Not, and that's not talking about like hell fire you burning in some place underground for all eternity right it's talking about you burning with lust and desire that causes you to do something that you're not supposed to do like go and sleep with another woman right go and sleep with uh you know what i'm saying with well right you go and, and cause another man to commit adultery right so on and so forth so keep reading huh verse verse not verse 10 and unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Right, exactly. So you're not supposed to depart from your husband. So the last man that you slept with, if y'all not together, you need to go and do everything in your power to make it right with him because he's your husband. Read. Verse 11. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Right, and if you want to depart from him, right, then you go and you be alone, right, Read. Or be, um, be be reconciled to her husband. Or you go and you get back with that man, right, Reed? Right? And let not the husband put his wife away. He's not supposed to forsake you. He's supposed to guide you in righteousness, right, Reed? Right? Verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord, if any brother have a wife that be that believeth not. If a brother has a wife that believe not, right, I take you as my wife, but you don't believe, but I believe, right, Reed? Right? And she be pleased to dwell with him. We can still make it work, right, Reed? Let him not put her away. Then I would have to stay with you, Reed. Verse 13. And a woman which have a husband that believeth not. Right, and then, or if you go and get with a man and you believe, but he doesn't believe, right, Reed? And if he be pleased to dwell with her, y'all can still make it work, right, Reed? Let her 
not leave him. You probably ain't gonna be with that man, you know? Verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. What is that? For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbeliever wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean. But now are they holy? Right. So even if you're a believer and your husband is not, or let's say that your husband is a believer and you're not, but y'all can still make it work and y'all make it work. Right? You go and so you are bound to that man until he goes and he sleeps with somebody else's wife. Right? But technically, as of right now, if he hasn't gone and done that, then you would still be bound to that man. Right? Go ahead. Uh, two and what you got? You got. Go ahead. This is the book of John, chapter 4, verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Right? The woman answered and said that she didn't have no husband, right? Because our people don't understand what a marriage is, right? She said that she told Christ that she didn't have no husband, right? Right? Jesus said unto her, I was shy, the Savior of Israel, right, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, right? right? Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that saidest thou true. So, so sex is married, so Yahweh shot, she said that she didn't have a husband. Yahweh said, you're a liar, you have five husbands, and she slept with five different men. And the man that she's with now is not even her husband, her true husband. Right, so you can see how sex can be equated with marriage, right? So if our people understood the, 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 um, the severity, right, how deep it is for us to sleep with each other, right, the, the covenant, Right, the covenant or the contract that you're entering into, right, when you lay down with this person, right, if we understood marriage from a biblical perspective, we wouldn't be so quick to jump into bed with everybody that you like, right, everybody that looks good to you, right, we would operate in wisdom, right, but we have to have a proper understanding in order for us to operate wisely, right, right. The scriptures say that when I was a child, I spoke as a child, and I thought as a child, and I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Right? Go ahead, read. Uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 24, and verse 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. Right. And took Rebecca. Right. He took her like a man might take a woman at the club. Right? Exactly. Come here. Right? Go ahead, read. And she became his wife. So where was there a minister in the tent to tell them, I now pronounce you man and wife by the state of Pennsylvania, right, Reed? And he loved him, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Isaac was comforted after his mother's death because he became his wife. So what did they do in the tent that she became his wife? They had sex, right, showing you that sex is marriage, right? Marriage is not, I take you to the altar and we exchange vows and we say, how you doing, all that. And the proof that that's not what a marriage is, is that even in the United States, there's laws in place that say that if you do not have sex within a set period of time after the wedding ceremony, that that marriage is not valid and hence it gets annulled, meaning it never really existed because the act of sex is what makes the marriage, not the wedding ceremony, right? Yep, the consummation of the right. And then the scriptures deals with that, though, with the tokens of virginity, right? With the white cloth that you had to put on the sheet. That you would take your woman into the wedding chamber, which has a bed with that white sheet, and then her fluid would get onto that sheet, and you would fold it up and give it to her parents. And that's the receipt that, that what you gave me, your daughter, was in functioning condition, right? And we have an agreement. You got something?